is at Louisiana Correctional Institute for Women at the Jetson campus. Would uh, staff at LCIW please introduce yourself for the record? That's one, Boutte. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Tara P. Records Manager. Good morning. Good morning. Lieutenant Scott. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, thank you. And um, so we're, I think we're ready for our first case and I've asked staff to introduce the case while you were bringing the offender in. This is the case for Pamela Fruge, DOC 578-976. We have no participants. Okay, thank you. There we go. Good morning, Ms. Fruge. Good morning. Ma'am, would you introduce yourself to the parole panel? Tell us your name and your DOC number. My name is Pamela Fruge. My DOC number is 578976. Okay, and I think you must have heard the introductions of the parole panel. So let me just explain to you how the process will work. I'll read some identifying information into the record. Your case has been assigned to Ms. Pearl Wise. So after um, I finish the preliminaries, I'll turn it over to her and she'll uh, ask you some questions. Okay. We'll hear from Warden Butte, and at the very end, you'll uh, be allowed to make a statement before we reach a decision. Okay. Okay. So Ms. Fruge, you're classified as a first felony offender. You were sentenced, you are currently doing a 20 year sentence for crime against nature carnal knowledge and indecent behavior with a juvenile. Your parole eligibility date is March the 1st, 2021. You don't earn good time and your full term date is November 2nd, 2029. Is that information correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Ms. Wise. Good morning. Good morning. How's it going? Okay. Good, that's great. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I see that uh, you got a bachelor's degree. Tell me about that. Yes, ma'am. I have a bachelor's degree through Ashland University with, in communications. I also received a minor in business administration. Um, whenever it was a three-year process, I had also gotten an associate's degree in general studies first. Um, it was a program they started here at LCIW and when I graduated, I actually graduated with honors. Great. Well, congratulations. Good job. Thank you. Good job. And uh, and, and your in, in your letter that your mother uh, sent me in, she said that you helped over a hundred individuals get their GED. Is that correct? Um, it's closer to two hundred and fifty, actually. Okay. I've been a high set math tutor tutor since two thousand and eleven, and okay. we switched to the high set in two thousand and fourteen. Okay, great. Well, thank you for that. Yes, I, I tell you, you are, you have definitely that. That's you've made a difference. You definitely made a difference in their lives. So, um, how long have you been in jail? I've been in jail for roughly eleven and a half months or eleven and a half years. Okay. So, when you got arrested on eleven two oh nine, did you ever bond out? Um, I did for only a day, and then okay. I was rearrested on another charge. Okay, so you, it's 11-3 of 2009, you've been incarcerated. Okay, all right. So um, tell us about your programs. What have you had? Um, I have completed um, parenting classes, anger management classes. Um, I've also participated in the Celebrate Recovery Program, which helped me immensely to deal with the internal reason, like, things that I had gone through even as a child and uh, through adulthood. Um, but I've also, on top of that, I will have received an IC3 certification, which is a computer literacy certification. And I helped pilot the Python programming, computer programming course. And I was the first woman in female inmate in the state of Louisiana to receive that certification. Well, congratulations. That's the coding stuff? You, yes, ma'am. Like okay. writing computer programs? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, well, great. But well, thank you for that. Oh, my. Oh, my. 
Uh, you didn't call out sex offender treatment. Have yes, you had that? I, I did finish. I completed that course. It was a very long course. It took me quite a few years to finish it, but I did complete the sex offender course. So, so tell me what you know now you didn't know before. No, ma'am. <laughs> um, uh -huh. One of the things was that um, having a support system was extremely important and being open and honest with them and being able to discuss what I needed to do in order to not get into trouble in the first place. Okay. Um, okay. I also, well, what, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, also, another thing I learned was that it's our, our thoughts that can cause us to do make choices that are not what we should do to, that will lead us to be offenders. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, now the, the the record it, it kind of went both ways. That your husband, all of this was his, you know, doing, and not so much yours. What do you say to that now? Um, I would say that that in part is true. However, I did have my part in this, and I did allow things that I should never have allowed to happen in my house not only to my daughter, but also to myself. Mm -hmm. um, looking back on that, I see now that my state of mind may have had a play in that, but ultimately it was my decisions. And when I should have left, I didn't. And I mm -hmm. should have been stronger to have left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, and, and protect your children. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I, I appreciate you saying that. I really appreciate you owning your participation in the crime. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you know this or not, but there's law enforcement opposition against your early release. Okay. Um, and and, of course, and um, there's victim opposition. All your children oppose to your early release. Uh, they, uh, I think somebody said uh, that your early release, I'm going to read this verbatim, should be based on what the children desired and not on what you desire. What do you say to that? it should be based on their decision because ultimately it's them that I hurt. Okay. And so they're, they should have a choice in this. Okay. Well, good. I'm glad to hear you say that. Now, if you are successful today in your release, what are your plans? Um, my plans first are to find, obviously find a job so that I can support myself, but also I want to be able to go and find a church that has a celebrate recovery or some type of support system where I can have people, other people than just my family that'll be there to help me when I'm in need. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay. I also uh, have plans. Yes, ma'am. Go, you go ahead. Okay. I also have plans that I eventually want to be able to build. I've looked into tiny homes and self-sufficient living. Mm -hmm. so that I can eventually have savings and things of that sort one day mm -hmm. so that I'll be able to support myself and not be such a burden on my family or the community. Mm -hmm. So your, your residence plan is with your mother? Yes, ma'am. Well, for now, yes, ma'am. I okay. um, Either with my mother or with my cousin is okay. start out. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, ma'am. That's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Wise. Mr. Marabella? Uh, Ms. Frigier, uh, how are you today? My name is Tony Marabella. I've got a couple of questions. Uh, you've been in jail for over 11 years, is that right? Yes, sir. Sounds like you've done a lot of good things, a lot of good programs. You sound very intelligent. Uh, you've worked very hard. You've accomplished a lot of things. Uh, you know, the crime for which you you're in prison and the facts under which you were convicted are pretty devastating. Yes, sir. Uh, tell me how this came about. Uh, I mean, uh, I know Ms. Ms. Wise questioned you on your husband's role in this, but but uh, how, how did you get started in this? Um, well, sir, there was actually another party involved my husband introduced me to a man online from Denmark and okay. told me that I should trust him. And through online chats, um, I now looking back, see a manipulation there. However, 
I had the choice of speaking to him. I now see that I should not have. But at the time, I was looking for attention for myself that I wasn't receiving from my husband. And so this man suggested things. And while I did protest from them, initially, I made the choice to follow what he asked me to do at times. Have, have you had any sort of a, a mental health evaluation of any kind during the course of your life? Not just while you've been in prison, but even before that. No, sir. Okay. Uh, and you've taken all of the sex offender courses. Of, you yes, said sir. Two years of it. Okay. Yes, sir. Your, ch your children are in opposition. And I know you discussed that a little bit with Ms. Wise. What would you say to your children today? What would you say to them uh, about what you did and how you feel? Uh, the most I can say is that I apologize that I should have made different choices. I should have protected them and I didn't. I should have packed them in a car and left and I can't and I didn't and I can never take that back. But the only thing I could ever ask is for their forgiveness and work to earn their forgiveness and their trust again. Have you had any sort of contact with your husband? No, sir. Writing or anything like that? He has written me a few times, but I've never responded. Thank you. That's all the questions I have. Uh, Ms. Fruscia, you mentioned um, prior to incarceration, you never had a, a mental health evaluation. Have you had one since you've been there at LCIW? Um, no, ma'am. They had, when I was in my parish, I had spoken with um someone about, but they had put me on some medication for depression. But since then, I've not taken it since about two thousand and twelve, and I haven't really spoken to a social worker or anything like that since then. Okay, I, that's what I was getting at. It's I saw somewhere in the record where you were taking some medication for depression. Yes. And I, I just, okay. All right, I don't have any questions. Um, my colleagues did a good job. Let's, uh, Warden Butte, is there anything you can offer? Uh, yes, ma'am. As far as her mental health status is, is concerned, I mean, she's high functioning, so she doesn't have any issues as it relates to her mental health status while being incarcerated. Other than that, I mean, her record speaks for itself with her disciplinary action. I think she has one DB report in her file and uh, the rest is, uh, she's been assertive with education. Other than that, I have nothing to add. Thank you, sir. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say, Ms. Fruge, a statement you'd like to make? Yes, I'd like to thank y'all for this opportunity because I know there's some women who don't ever receive this opportunity opportunity and I'd just like to ask that y'all have mercy mm -hmm. and okay. I'd like to, that's all thank you okay. thank you all right is the panel prepared to vote Ms. I Wise? have one other I have one other question um, okay we they uh the adverse um the ace was done on you for his, uh your adverse childhood and you scored a one uh, so you know you indicate there was some you know you got some unresolved issues but you didn't have a a traumatizing childhood. Would, would that be accurate to say? Yes, ma'am. I I was sexually abused once as a child, and that was prosecuted. But other than that, no, ma'am. At, at what age? At eight, the age of eight years old. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And that person didn't live in the home. That person, okay. No. I think that was a, that was your girlfriend's father or somebody, right? right. It was her uncle. Yes, ma'am. It was her. It was her right. uncle. Right. Is this your first hearing? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. I'm prepared to vote now, Chairman. All right, Ms. Wise. Okay. Uh, I really commend you for all the hard work that you've done. Uh, and I, uh, but today I'm going to vote to deny because of the strong victim opposition and the strong law enforcement opposition. I encourage you to stay the course and write back when you're eligible for a rehearing. That is my vote. Thank you, Ms. Wise. Mr. Marabella. Ms. Frugge, uh, you have done a, a tremendous job while you have been in prison. There's no question of that. Uh, you are clearly on the right track. 
uh, I have some concerns myself and in, in, in the concerns uh, have to do with, with what happened. Uh, certainly there's, there's opposition that means something to me as well. I'm very concerned about that. I would feel a lot more comfortable if you had a mental health evaluation and, 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 and got a clean bill of health or got some medication if you need it. Uh, my vote today would be to deny as well, but I would encourage you to keep the course and perhaps look into trying to get some mental health uh, help just to make sure the next panel that you come before uh, can see all of that information. So uh, good luck to you and keep fighting. Okay. And uh, Ms. Fruget, I do, do uh, concur. I'm really pleased with the work that you've done in helping others. I think we need to focus on you at this point. I would also encourage you to see if you can seek out a mental health evaluation. So at least that information would be available to the next panel. Um, Based on the opposition though, my vote today is to deny your parole, but uh, with a strong recommendation that you do reapply when you're eligible to do so. Good luck to you, ma'am. Thank you. This case is terrifying. They don't go into the details of it, but I will. And it is terrifying. I don't know if something like this has happened before but I do recall hearing about a very similar story, if it wasn't this one in the news, and maybe you do as well. Her responses, I mean, we've seen this over and over again. What's shocking is that when you read, and I'll read it to you, you don't expect to see what you've seen in this hearing, which is someone who is intelligent, who seems normal, who seems totally normal i i was reading the information richard shared before the hearing and i i was expecting a different person to show up i just didn't think that someone and that makes me come to the, my conclusion that she is a monster she doesn't should never see freedom because this is not this is someone who is just as it is and that she blames it on like the idea that there was a man in denmark that she was talking to and 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 she protested at first but eventually gave in to doing what she did it's it's totally you don't like he's he's in a different country i'll start by reading this article because i think they they, they kind of hit it on the head here and I'll put all these links in the description. But it says, uh, it's a crime that at first lent itself to a crude joke. A woman arrested for crime against nature after having the family dog perform oral on her. But the case involving F Pamela Fruge and her husband Shelton unfolded into something even more sordid severe against their own children. It was the video discovered by the police department of the dog performing on her that got them to find this case. But as the facts unfolded, they found out that they were, she was having her husband perform carnal knowledge on their on her daughter I, I six years old and they were trading these footage to this man in Denmark the man in Denmark was arrested now I tried um, finding his information and I couldn't and I did some googling but it could be I don't know for certain uh it could be that denmark does not release this information publicly and that's why i couldn't find it the judge said you treated her, your six-year-old like a sex toy that is just evil 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 now her husband was 
given not even like a full it was like uh he they got him for a bunch of different charges so they got him 60 years he's 35 years old they got him 60 years with a lifetime of supervisory release and why he didn't get a, a life sentence is just absolutely insane but this was for the production of child and um then they gave him this that was to run consecutive to his state sentence uh, following an investigation by U.S. Immigration and Customs, so you don't mess with them because Louisiana, sixty years. But the uh, uh, ICE gave him, I think, a life sentence. He he would photograph her as he was doing it to her, after producing this. He would um he would trade it. Yep. It's just unreal that these monsters exist. And and then they're being so like, and you see her come on, you would never guess it was even like, you know, you knew it was bad the way that they said at the end it was bad, but they're just like, oh yeah, how are you? How's your day? You know, oh that's great. You're taking programs, great. And you know, I get it fine that you want to treat them like humans. That's fine. They did. They denied her, and they knew they were going to deny her. That's fine. But the idea that she only got a 20 year sentence, what? And it's like the U.S. attorney. U.S. attorney Stephanie Finley stated, "Anyone who thinks they can commit such vile acts of the most vulnerable should think twice before doing it." In this district, our office, along with our federal, state, and local partners, vigorously investigate and prosecute those who prey on children in our community, and that is a lie. HSI re relentlessly pursues predators who abuse or um, physical nature and accompanied by exploiting their images. Special agent in charge of ICE HSI New Orleans, our special agents will continue to police cyberspace and target those who exploit those in the most defense segments of our society. They make these quotes that you would think, wow, this is great. They really are. But then we, we know better because we've seen all the hearings. We've seen how little these little sentences are handed out. So you can't fall for the propaganda. You have to see the truth. And, you know, it's probably not fair to them. They do the right job at finding and cap capturing them and showing the evidence. So maybe it's not fair to be a bit, but it's the district attorneys and the judges that don't seem to care. Judge Patricia Minaldi said it was one of the worst cases she'd ever been involved in in her entire career. U.S. Attorney Stephanie Finley says anyone who thinks they can commit such a vile act, the most vulnerable should think twice before doing it in this district. And I say it sarcastically because we've seen the sentences that Louisiana hands out to these cockroaches, and they ain't tough. Um, she got 20 years, 20 years. How is that possible? Her kids make a statement that they don't want her out. And then she still pleads after she hears that statement for mercy, instead of just saying, you know what? My kids don't want me out. I take it back. No, she still puts on a sob story. On her parole hearing, she states, you know, I do take responsibility, but um, I was introduced to a man from my husband who's in Denmark, and I shouldn't have trust, and he said I should trust him. And it's like, do you... 
she was involved in this in every step of the way. Her own daughter, her own six-year-old daughter. How does she only get 20 years? Why is she not locked up for life? She's going to be out. And, and, and then you hear these district attorneys boasting how great they are, and it makes me sick. You two-faced liars. Why? Because the husband got a 60-year sentence on top of the life sentence? Okay, so your husband will be locked away for life, but but you've let why do you let the wife off? Why? She's just as bad. It's the same thing. She wasn't. You saw her talk. This isn't we have seen some cases where where there does seem to be like some type of mental problem going on i'm saying mental like like they're very slow they have a low iq this is not the case here for all we know she was the one who initiated everything for all we know she was a, the driving force behind it and that she can be free one day is absolutely terrible not can be will be 2028 if she doesn't get paroled Next time she comes up, we'll probably see her again soon. Come on. Wake up, Louisiana. How can you be so... You know, and even in her... T she doesn't even seem to have reasons. She she claims that she was, you know... But she ranked a one that was miss white went to one which i don't know if you can can you have a zero in, in on these tests for trauma not that it makes a difference i wouldn't care if she ranked a 10 or one it's it's it's, it's it doesn't her six-year-old daughter but this is why we do this this is why we do this because uh, we can't keep our head in the sand. We need to hold our DAs and our judges accountable. You can't just make a press release how you're tough on crime and then have this happen. Can't do it. But this is why we do this. With that, I'll let you go.